Green Lantern is a coaster name that sends shivers down the spine of many coaster enthusiasts. Some have traumatic experiences getting stuck upside down the one that used to be at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Others have had their family jewels or legs take a beating on the stand-up coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. But the third and final Green Lantern coaster is actually a comfortable experience for all, and that would be none other than the SNSL Loco at Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia. This is a quirky ride, like all the other El Locos, and it most famously features the steepest drop on a coaster in the Southern Hemisphere. Find out everything you need to know about this coaster in this review. All three of these Green Lantern coasters opened in 2011. Coincidence? Not at all. 2011 was the year that Warner Brothers released Green Lantern. Starring Ryan Reynolds as the titular hero, this was supposed to be one of the biggest movies of the year, but it was panned by critics and absolutely bombed. This is widely considered to be one of the worst superhero movies of all time, and Reynolds has even poked fun at the film multiple times in his career. All three of the Green Lantern coasters debuted in summer. With Australia's seasons, this meant their Green Lantern was the last to open, debuting just a few days before Christmas. This was the fourth El Loco SNS ever built. This is a compact coaster model designed by Alan Schilke. The coaster features beyond vertical drops, outward bank turns, and hang time filled inversions. Green Lantern has a nearly identical layout to the three that came before it, but there were four notable changes that enhanced the experience. First, it would be a bit taller. The other El Locos are just a hair below 100 feet or 30 and a half meters in height. Green Lantern is 108 feet or 33 meters tall. Second, the drop would be steeper. The first drop is a record breaking 120 and a half degree angle of descent. The park marketed this as the steepest drop in the world, but that wasn't quite correct. Takabisha at Fujiku Highland opened just a few months prior, and that one had a 121 degree angle of descent. But Movie World's coaster has been the unquestioned record holder in the Southern Hemisphere ever since it opened. Third, this would be the first El Loco to feature lap bar only trains. The prior three had a lap bar that would swivel from the side and press downwards, much like the restraints on SNS Scream and Swings but these were accompanied by shoulder pads. I never found the latter uncomfortable, but they were quite restrictive. Green Lantern would feature comfortable overhead lap bars. This was far more freeing and enhanced both the airtime hills and inversions. Thankfully, the other two L logos that followed Green Lantern received these restraints as well. Fourth, these trains would have double the capacity. All the other L logos hold four riders per train and two rows of two, Green Lantern accommodates 8 riders per train and 2 rows of 4. This is a major help for a park as large as Movie World. However, this ride can still garner a lengthy line on a busy day. The park typically has a few trains on the course at once, but it's not the most efficient coaster. Along with its limited capacity, a few policies slow dispatches even further. First, the grouper was also checking restraints. You are randomly assigned row 1 or 2, they did not seem to be taking seating requests, but the ride felt identical in either row, so I didn't really mind. Second, you also need to store your belongings on the load platform. This includes bags, anything in your pockets, and even glasses. No exceptions. This adds some extra time before riders can get seated in the train. Third, the restraint checks can take a bit. Along with the lap bar, there is a redundant seatbelt that goes across your waist. If I remember correctly, the employees would not lower your lap bar until your belt was checked. If these checks could be done at the same time, operations would be noticeably faster, but they'd have to backtrack and do the lap bar at a second pass. Two trains are loaded, checked, and dispatched in tandem at least. There are two ways to beat the crowds for this ride. First, you can use the virtual queue. This is a free service included with your park ticket. You can reserve one ride at a time on the park app. Once your time is called, you have a half hour to return. Once you use your pass or it expires, you can book another, and you are free to keep booking Green Lantern over and over if you'd so like. Return times will run out in busy days, but this seemed to be one of the last rides to run out of return times. The other way to skip the queue line is to purchase Fast Track. This is a pricey skip the line pass, but it can be a major time saver if the park is slammed. You are routed right into the station using the same line as the virtual queue. You can either purchase the full system, which gives you one-time access to all the park's major rides, or you can purchase single shots. The latter costs roughly 20 to 30 Australian dollars, depending on the day. 
You may also have some success making us your first ride of the day. I think Green Lantern is technically the closest coaster to the main entrance. It looks quite enticing with those wacky elements running alongside the parking lot. However, the one saving grace is DC Rivals. That coaster also runs along the parking lot as even more of a draw. And oddly, you cannot reach Green Lantern's entrance without first passing under a giant archway bearing the name of DC Rivals, so a lot of people just bypass Green Lantern at first and favor the latter. I do wish this coaster had a single rider line. Movie World offers this on a few rides like DC Rivals and even Wild West Falls. It's a big help for both those rides. For Green Lantern, I'd often see one or two empty seats going out each train due to the four cross seating. Movie World has good theming on several of their rides, but Green Lantern is not one of them. The track itself looks good with the bold green paint scheme, and I like the entry sign with the hero's iconic emblem, but there is nothing else to see around the attraction. That's part of the reason you don't want to get stuck in a long queue line for this ride. I should also note this ride was designed to have onboard audio, but it was not working the day I visited Movie World. Not sure if I just had rotten luck, this feature is problematic, or if it has been removed for some time. Let me know down in the comments how frequently the audio is used and what it was like when it did run. Once you're dispatched, you turn out of the station and ascend the 11 story tall lift hill. There was this odd kink engaging the lift, but the coaster was otherwise very smooth. Green Lantern is one of the steepest and fastest lift hills out there, so you're at the top in the blink of an eye. At the top, you have a small dip and a sharp unbanked turn. You'll get some laterals here. It reminds me of a hairpin turn on a wild mouse coaster. You then head over the ride's signature drop. Now unfortunately, there is a trim brake. I believe this functions as a pseudo holding brake to accentuate the visual. You'll find this in all the L logos except the one at Adventure Dome. This brake did take away all the airtime in Steel Hog at Indiana Beach, but I still got some airtime on Green Lantern. It was just a delayed pop. You wouldn't come out of your seat until you cleared the brake. It cannot match the intense negative Gs you get on Adventure Dome's El Loco, or any other unbraked beyond vertical drop for that matter. You then sharply rise upwards. You get a decent pop of airtime here, but that's not all. The hill starts banking left before you hit the apex, so you're also going to get some great laterals. I think that's better than the negative Gs to be honest on this hill. This leads right into a brake run. It will slow you down, but that's advantageous for what comes next. You then have a tight outward bank turn. You get some solid lateral hang time as you come perilously close to a support. This is followed by a conventional 180 degree turn. It starts off pretty dull, but you just keep on banking until you're fully inverted for a dive loop. You hang upside down for a few seconds, resulting in some spectacular hang time. Remember, you have just a lap bar holding you in. You then quickly dive downwards. Immediately afterwards, you rise back up into a big turnaround. You get a good burst of airtime here, the best negative G's on the ride. You go through another mid-course brake run, again slowing down, but again it's beneficial. You round a corner and navigate a downwards barrel roll. You go through this element at a leisurely rate, so you get another lengthy dose of hang time. You then have a tight overbank that admittedly doesn't do too much. Then you jump upwards into the final brake run. I thought this may give airtime, but the brakes kick in too quickly to do so. You then calmly return to the station, ending the 1,601 foot or 488 meter long coaster. Minus the change in restraints, the overall experience is nearly identical to that of Steel Hog at Indiana Beach. Three of the other El Locos in Timber Drop at Fry Pretty City, Crazy Bird at Happy Valley, and Mumbo Jumbo at Flamingo Land look to give comparable experiences as well. While I prefer the lap bars to the old restraints, the rides rank fairly similarly for me. So what would I rate Green Lantern? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a good coaster. If you like odd elements, this is the ride for you. The Beyond Vertical Drop is cool. I wish it was unbraked, but it still is a fun element. Then you have some airtime pops, nice laterals, and genuinely scary hang time on the inversions to round out the experience. I'm surprised the El Loco model didn't sell more because it's a super marketable attraction and it's fairly enjoyable too. So those are my thoughts on Green Lantern at Warner Brothers Movie World. What are your thoughts on this coaster? How do you think it compares to the other El Locos out there? Let me know down in the comments.
If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.